You see, the problem with Magnet the First City is that it's a very well done game that ultimately comes down to a single moment of luck. Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And today I'm reviewing Magnet the First City, a game of taking advantage of the real estate market as the prices slowly start to rise and then making sure to sell everything before everything goes absolutely bust. In this game, you're going to be going through a variable number of rounds. You'll go through, let's walk you through the round order over here. You're going to start every turn with bidding for turn order. From there, you're going to go ahead and attract tenants. I'm going to skip that part. We'll come back to it in a second. It'll make more sense. From there, you're going to take three actions, one at a time, going around in turn order. And you're going to take actions from this little handy handy player right over here starting off with the first action which is buying land when you buy land in this game you can buy any of the available plots of land for sale for the current real estate market the land value over there the land price although you can also buy other plots of land adjacent to plots of land you own by paying double the land price of their available which is expensive sometimes worth it. The next action you can take is you can build. You can build a building on one of your plots of land, referencing the little handy dandy chart, referencing that tells you the cost for all the buildings, but you're going to be building a variety of buildings on the plots of land you own with the goal of both attracting tenants as well as going ahead and selling the building for a very fun multiplier. We'll get to that shortly. The next action, speaking of which, is selling. You can go ahead and take a sell action, selling the buildings you just bought, selling any number of buildings. Again, this entire game is all about flipping real estate. You're going to attract tenants. Those will give you some income that's helpful but really you're playing the short game you're not playing the long game you're trying to make things go crazy you're trying to establish the value of a presence bring some tenants in establish the buildings build up the neighborhood and then turn around and sell that thing for a multiplier you need to sell to bring more cash in so you can buy more so you can sell more rinse and repeat across the course of the game Additionally, you can consult. When you consult, you basically give up an action to take a little bit of a, a income equal to the land price. It's a way of getting a little bit of cash back into the game, which is important because this will slowly be creeping up and eventually there'll be times where you just don't have the money to buy things unless you go ahead and do so. And then finally, you can go ahead and build, you can go ahead and do advertising action, which is where you'll take a few advertising tokens, which can be very helpful to attract tenants. So once again, you're going through a sequence of a bunch of actions there, and the three actions you're taking are going to primarily be a whole lot of, of uh, consulting, getting a little cash influx, going ahead and building buildings, of buying land, and of selling land. Now we'll come back to the selling thing first, but now let's go ahead and rotate to the property market phase. At the end of the round, you're going to go through a property market phase where you're going to go through a whole sequence of steps that will both affect how the land price slowly moves up, as well as how it affects the end game and the crashing of the market. You see, every single round, you're going to go through a few phases where depending on the availability of tenants, if the tenants have started to clear out, you're going to start drawing risk cards, which will determine the end game. I'll show you how in a second. Then you'll go to the land price zone, where depending on how high the price is, the higher the price goes, the riskier the market, and the more people start to wonder if we're all living in a bubble, and therefore you draw more risk cards. Then we go to the plot sold by players section. In the plot sold by players section, every single time you take a sell action, you're going to take your player marker and put it down on one of these spots. As this goes higher and higher, you're going to start, first of all, the price of the market, the price of the land is going to go up, but additionally, you're going to start drawing more risk cards. If nothing is sold, well, that's a risk in itself, and you'll draw a risk card that way. But additionally, once a certain number of things sold, you start to wonder exactly whether this is a stable market or not, and you draw more risk cards. As you notice, everything in this sequence over here is designed to have you draw more risk cards. Additionally, you have advertising tokens, where if nobody advertised for tenants, well, you're going to, going to go ahead and draw more risk cards. And if too many people advertise for tenants, then the price of the land will go up. So again, you have these modifiers in place that are slowly bumping up the land price and checking for risk cards every single round. Now, every round, you're going to go ahead and draw these risk cards, except for the first round, but every subsequent round, you'll be drawing these most likely, depending on how things played out and those things will affect the crash track by zero in this case or this thing's by zero in this case by zero in this case by there's a whole bunch of zeros fine by a two over here you're going to slowly be moving this down every round as you draw those risk cards half this deck is zeros those three zeros not that crazy half this deck is zeros but they also have these little modifiers for how far the market will crash because you want to keep these in play because of the fact that when the market crashes you're going to have a big tank in the actual pricing as the game progresses this is slowly moving up slowly moving up and every time you take a sell action you're doing so based on that multiplier again we'll come back to selling in a second but then at the end of the game you're going to see a giant drop as things drop for a huge amount and you'll sell everything you'll add up your points add up your money that will be your score and then you'll determine who has the most money in magnets first cities magnets the first city so let's go back to that sell action. As you go through the game, as you buy things, as you build things, every round, the land is slowly ticking up. And you're going to have that first round, you're going to spend 300k on something. And then by the four you know it, you're going to be up to 700k. You're going to have a plot of land and you're going to start doing the math of how you sell. 
every time you sell, you basically add up a few things and multiply that by the land price, resulting in huge gains if you sell at the right time in the right place, which is basically always. Sell always in this game. You're going to be adding up the plot of land itself. You're going to be adding up the building on it. You're going to be adding up the number of tenants in the building. You're going to be adding up any modifiers around the building as well. You're going to put that all together, some few modifiers, some other things, including some buildings, give themselves some modifiers, some adjacent get buildings, and you can have some giant numbers such as 12 times, you know, $700,000. You'll be getting a chunk of change for selling that building, a chunk of change that you'll immediately reinvest into buying more land and building more and bigger buildings in this game. The last thing to cover is the attract tenant stage. In the attract tenant stage, you're basically going to look at the marketplace around it. Every tenant has their own rules, all listed on the player aid. There's an advanced and a regular mode for this game as well. I do recommend the regular mode at first, but then you should go straight to the advanced after that first game. It's a much more intricate experience. But you're going to be looking around at the various things in the board. Specifically, you're going to look at your section, in its section, and all adjacent sections. And you're going to try to see exactly how many dice you roll to attract tenants. Tenants all want different things. People who are residents want to have places to work and places to shop. Places to shop want to have people a residence because they need more people to shop there. Places of work want more residents. They all have their configurations of what they want in terms of determining the number of dice you roll. And then you're going to modify those rolls based on specific modifiers around the board that show that an area is more attractive to tenants. You're going to roll those dice and start putting tenants into your board from the available marketplace of tenants. So you're going through a cycle of, of buy a plot of land, build a building on it, attract tenants, gather the rent from the tenants, but the, ten the rent from the tenants is just a little bit of cash influx to the game. The primary purpose of tenants is the more tenants you have in your building, the bigger the multiplier when you turn around and sell. And so you're going through that cycle of buy, build, sell, buy, build, sell, buy, build, sell, until the market eventually crashes, hopefully you called it correctly, at which point the game ends and you go to scoring. Let's talk about the game. Let's talk about the experience, starting off with the ease of play. The rules themselves are, are fairly simple, I think, but at the same time, I don't think this I don't think it, you immediately get the game until you start playing the game. And to that end, the game actually gives you a tutorial deck you can go through that will really guide you through the entire first experience so you get a feel of, do this because of that, buy this because of that, this modifies that, so be mindful of that, and I think it does a good job doing so. To be frank, we did not use it, but we did kind of go through it as we were playing our first game, getting a feel for what whoever was playing this game was doing, so we can get a feel for it ourselves. It does take a good half a game before you really understand how everything interplays together and so it's not a hard game to understand it's a fairly simple rule book but it takes a little bit to get a good feeling for what's happening as opposed to the pure rule set alone as far as player count this is a one to five player game i've played this only at four and five players I don't think, I mean, two I don't see working at all. One, I don't know the solo mode, so I'm not going to speak for that. I, I think three would work, but I think four is probably the sweet spot. Four is definitely preferable to five, just in terms of the amount of stuff happening, and amount of downtime between turns. But overall, four and five are both reasonably close as far as my experience with them. As far as what I like, don't like, and can see others not liking, we have a whole bunch of things here. So, starting off with what I like. The quick action cycle, going round and round, taking a turn, resolving your action, works fairly well. Even at five players, the game had a brief clip to it, because you take a quick, simple action, and you start resolving that action as other players start cycling around, and half the time, it's back to you before you know it. You can take your second action, the third action, the game moves fairly quickly in the way the three action cycle plays out. The reactive marketplace, the fact that you're being mindful of what players are doing all the time in this game. As players build different buildings, it affects the odds of affecting residents, it affects the odds of, or the, the, the sell value of what you're going to get. Everything affects one another in this game. As you acquire tenants, especially if you're playing the advanced game, which again, I do recommend you play the advanced game once you've dove into this the first time, you start having more and more tenants that will have an effect on the board, on the spots all around it. And it does mean that you're not just playing your own little engine here. You have to be reactive to what players are doing. You have to adjust to the state of the board on a frequent, regular basis because things are popping up. This spot may be very attractive to industrial neighborhoods based on what's happening on the board. This spot may be very attractive to residential neighborhoods. You might start the game off with the intent of making a place attractive to your to your commercial shopping retail outlets because it might work well for what you're starting off the game with the game is adjustable the game does modify based on how players are building things and what's happening with a degree of scrooge and intensity the selling and buying action in the game is a ton of fun like when you go ahead and you buy that plot of land and you build that buildings and two turns later that thing that you invested 1.2 million turns around and sells for 7.4 there's a huge degree of just satisfaction in those sales and those sales are happening all game the cash influx here is is tremendous the fact that you'll be having the slowly moving up market and the modifiers you have and that eventual end game sell, sale that nets you 40 million dollars in a single action and it can happen is absolutely insane and it's very very satisfying to go through that and bidding on turn order is essential 
Bidding on turn order is very important, both for the fact that you want the tenants themselves, because you have first dibs on tenants based on turn order, but additionally because as you move into the actual game phase, there are plots of land that you will want to buy, and you will want to get first access to those. Spending an extra 400k, 500k to get that turn order can feel like a lot, but if the alternative is spending twice the land market value to get the spot you want, and twice the land market value is going to be an extra 700k, you may as well get in first, and it's not just about you, it's also about depriving your opponents of the tenants they want and the spots they want. You have to think both in terms of how good it is for you, but also, at the player to your left, how well are they doing at the game, and will they benefit, or even better, the player to your right, because when you're first in turn order, the player to your right is last, and so you want to be mindful of the fact that everyone has their own goals, and that bidding can be intense. And the tension around the market busting is a lot of fun. As the market tips down every single round, as you get to the final round, and players sit there and try to decide, is the market busting this round? And you have that degree of, sometimes when you feel that it is, you start selling, and then the other players get worried, and they start selling, and the market crashes, like a genuine market crash. There's a rush. There's a rush on the sale, and the lack of confidence in the market is often the thing that makes the market cross that round, which is both thematically appropriate and adds a degree of tension to the game that is really satisfying to go through. But also, in terms of things I don't like, I'm going to start with the market bust as well, because that is the biggest thing I both like and do not like about Magnet First Cities. The problem with the market bust is twofold. While I like what it adds to the game, and while it feels appropriate and it feels thematic, it adds two things that ruin the experience for me to a degree. Not ruin, ruin's a bit harsh. That take away from the experience for me. The first is the fact that when you have that, mar that market bust over there, Ultimately, you're making a call based on stats, you're making a judgment call based on how things will play out, based on the cards you're going to pull, and the problem with that is that the luck of a single call, that statistical probability that may or may not work in your favor, the fact that there's a 70% chance that you'd be safe, but ultimately the game goes with a 30% chance of failure. At the end of the game, it comes down to making a single judgment call around the stats of the game, around the stats of what the likely draw is, we're drawing four cards, should I or should I not sell, what are the odds, and do they work in my favor? And if you make the wrong call, or take it back, if you make the right call, but the stats work out against you, that die rolls six when it should have rolled one, two, three, or four, or five, it can absolutely result in the difference between winning or losing the game. Selling things is always the safe action, but if you don't sell, if you do sell and the other players don't and the market goes on for another game, they will win. And if you therefore go by the stats and you don't sell, but the market does crash, you may lose. This game absolutely can come down to a single judgment call, where, the, where the, even if you're making the right judgment call from a statistical probability stance, the game can absolutely mess with you. And that is, I mean, listen, luck in games is always present, but having a single judgment call, a single aspect of the luck not working out, be the difference between winning and losing, is a bit harsh. And then the second thing I don't like about the market track is the fact that when the market doesn't collapse and you know for a fact it is collapsing this turn, like if you start to play it out and you're like, okay, great, we think we're safe and everyone holds on and then you move to the next round and it's inherent at that point. You're down to the, the one over there. You know it's going to crash. You know you're drawing four cards. You know it's happening. That last turn is incredibly anticlimactic. The game is, is very tense when you get to that end game. You get to that end game and you're wondering if it will or won't, but when you know it will, there's no tension to that last round. It takes the fun out of the game, which is a bizarre thing because I'm both saying that the market crash adds a lot of tension to the fun, and it is the thing that really takes away from the experience. It kind of puts Magnet First City into a spot where it's incredibly strategic, incredibly calculating, and yet it comes down to a single judgment call, which isn't great. Additionally, you can get kind of caught into the action loop. The buy land, build on land, sell land, or more specifically, it's usually buy land, because you want to get the land before it's snatched up, sell your existing buildings, build a new building. Because of the three actions in the game, you can get stuck stuck in that loop very often, where as the game mid-game approaches, you're just buy, sell, build, buy, sell, build, buy, sell, build, seems to be the most efficient sequence you go through. Now, it's possible we're playing this wrong in terms of just the strategy we're approaching it with, but buy, sell, build is a very repetitive cycle that we have found ourselves in when we play this game. The first rounds, not necessarily as much, because you also have like the buy, buy, build, or the buy, buy, no, the buy, buy, build for the most part. But buy, sell, build seems to be a very common way to approach it. Occasionally, the monotony is broken up with buy, consult, build. You, you hold on something for a little longer, and that means the last round, you might go with a buy, sell, sell, or any number of different configurations. The point is that it can get into a bit of a samey loop. There's still decisions to be made, but the core action you're taking can get a bit repetitive. As far as I can see, others not liking, first of all, the fact that it's not always easy to see everything. 
as you build out in this game, as the board develops, it gets harder and harder to tell at a glance what are the dice I'm going to be rolling, what are the modifiers I'm going to have, and it has a lot of degree of recalculating every single time. You're like, well, this has, okay, we have six tenants, we have uh, four retail industries, okay, great, we're going to be rolling seven dice, okay, that's fine. We're also rolling a plus one modifier from this, a plus one modifier from that, a negative one modifier from that. There's a lot of frequent recalculating. It's not the end of the world, but it certainly is present in the game. Secondly, the general look of the buildings. The buildings have a very strong, plasticky look to the game. We have a, an excavator as a first player marker. I happen to like this. The buildings I'm kind of more on the fence on. But as far as the general, there's a large degree of like plasticky toy factor to the way the game looks, which may or may not be your thing. As far as final thoughts on Magnets of the First City, Magnets of the First City is a game that grew on us more and more as we started playing it, as we moved to the advanced game, as we dove deeper into the experience, but it's a game that also started tapering off the more we went into it as well. The initial start of the game, the initial approach into the engine is building is very compelling. There's a lot of strategy, a lot of choice, a lot of agency, a lot of trying to take advantage of the real estate market, making sure you buy things now, make sure you buy everything, make sure you build, holding onto things for rent, selling things for the money, that immense satisfaction. Again, that $7.4 million sale, three, four turns into the game, it's not that long. It's like three turns into the game, you'll be selling something for $7.4 million, which is absolutely, it's just a lot of fun to do that. But then the game and the experience is a little bit ruined by the fact that this is a very strategic game that comes down to a single judgment call, a single thing that works out for you or not, which puts this game in a weird space for me. It's not a game which is like light enough and simple enough where I'm fine with the fact that a game will be determined by that. And it's a game that's heavy enough, but also has that mixed in. It feels out of place to the experience. It's a very good experience, but one that you have to be okay with a very strategic experience that comes down to a single judgment call. And if the market doesn't bust, you're left with a very anticlimactic, very boring last final round, arguably more strategic at that point, but very anticlimactic and just less fun. So this one has me, has me very torn. A lot of fun things going on here. A lot of things I really enjoy. Enjoyed, but also putting it in a slightly weird space where I don't know which, where this fits for my game groups. A little bit too chaotic and crazy for my, my heavier strategy game groups, and a little bit too strategic and intense for my lighter groups. This puts it in a very weird space that just makes it a game that will be hard to actually table because of that weird combination uh, of the market bust and luck mixed into a heavier strategy game. This one's a 3.5 out of 5 for me. I like it a lot in some areas. But it really, really feels... I don't know the solution here. I don't know the solution. It's a good game with complaints. As far as other game recommendations, uh, starting off the bat with Tinner's Trail from Martin Wallace. It gives me a very similar feeling of, of taking advantage of the market, of the market developing around other players, of players bidding on different things, trying to figure out the right economy of the board. Very solid game from, from Martin Wallace, recently reprinted by Alley Cat Games with a new twists and puzzles thrown into it. And then additionally, this game does give me a feeling of Food Chain Magnet and the way the market, the land is developing around you and the way you want to react to the, the real estate developing and building up around you gives me very strong food chain food chain magnet vibes at the same time. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, have a good one.